Hey, welcome to another Mastery in the Draw license application video. Austin Atkinson here from the Hunt and Fool office. And today we wanted to go over the Idaho Bighorn Sheep Draw. Idaho is a unique state where they offer Bighorn Sheep Tags for both Rockies and California Bighorn. We're gonna go over the sequence of the draw, talk about the true odds for non-residents versus probably some of the myths you've heard about Idaho sheep odds. We're gonna talk about the non-refundable costs because it is an expensive state to apply for. And we're gonna talk about how and when to apply. So to first kick it off, we're gonna talk about the sequence of the draw with a simulation that I've got here. We're gonna base this off of 2020 numbers. But keep in mind for 2021, there will be 94 total tags broken out with 78 Rocky tags and 16 California tags. But when we look at 2020 odds, we're gonna base it off of all the residents and all the non-residents that applied. Keep in mind only your first choice matters and there are no bonus points. So everyone is equal. Literally everyone is equal at the beginning of the draw, whereas non-residents are eligible for all hunts. Okay, we're gonna take these 1,971 non-residents that applied last year and the 1,687 residents, and we're going to mix them up. This is the draw. Here's our non-residents. You can see there's slightly more non-residents than there are residents that apply. Let's see how the draw actually works now. So everybody's equal. Idaho will randomize everybody's application, look at their first choice, and start pulling people out of the hat. First guy out, resident. He gets his choice because he's the very first guy. Next guy out, another resident. As long as the guy before him did not take the tag that he wanted, meaning the quota has not been met for that hunt code, then he gets his tag. You see, a lot of people think hunts are drawn in Idaho by hunt code. They start at you know, 5,001 and go down the list. That is not true. They draw everybody together. Here is our first non-resident. Uh, assuming the two guys in front of him did not take the hunt he wanted and took the last tag available, he will get his tag no matter what his application is. So if he put unit 11, Hell's Canyon, let's talk about that. Last year, there were 433 applicants that put in for Unit 11. If he was the first guy that came out that had Unit 11, he gets the permit. Okay, he goes into the hat, Unit 11 tag is gone. So now, we take all of these residents and non-residents, 432 of them left, out of the hat. Sorry guys, you applied for Unit 11 and all the tags were gone. We're taking them out. There's always more non-residents that apply for unit 11 than residents. It is a top unit, some really big rams, but your odds are horrible. Those guys are now ineligible. So we continue the draw. Another non-resident. Couple non-residents there. Draw some residents. Remember, there's 94 tags up for grabs this year. So they're gonna pull out 94 people and give them tags until the non-resident cap of nine is met. So you see we've got five, six, seven, eight, and the last non-resident. He's lucky, he's number nine, he's in there. Now, what happens in the draw? These guys all got their tags, but the non-resident cap has been met. So everybody else that is a non-resident is now void. Thank you for your application. We're drawing the rest of the tags as residents. Let's clear these guys out. Okay, so we have all of the non-residents taken out. We appreciate your application. The state of Idaho will tell you, but you are now ineligible because the nine non-residents got their tag. Now we're going to continue drawing the rest of the 88 resident tags. Obviously, everybody that's coming out is a resident. So here's where the true odds come in versus the myth. You've probably heard that Idaho has some of the best bighorn sheep draw odds in the West. Well, 
Is it true? You can decide for yourself. If you're a resident, yeah, you better be putting in for bighorn sheep if you need a Rocky or a California because you've got some killer odds. If you're a non-resident, your true odds are really not based on the hunt code you're applying for. They're based on an accumulation of all the non-resident applicants you saw. Last year was 1,971 non-resident applicants for those nine top spots, the lucky nine that got their tags. If you do not fall in that top nine, it doesn't matter what hunt you put on your application, because the residents are gonna take the tags. That's just how it works. Your 10% species cap has been met, okay? So basic odds, divide that almost 2,000 non-residents by nine top spots. You've got about one in 219 basic odds. True odds, when we run our draws for our website, run our simulations based on real data, you're looking at about 0.2% if you applied for unit 11. And you saw why, because so many applicants apply for unit 11, Hell's Canyon, that it is tougher to be in the top nine and be position number one in the top nine, which is probably what you're gonna have to be to get unit 11. If you fall in positions two through nine of non-residents, you have a better chance of getting your tag. Most hunts outside of unit 11 are gonna be around that 0.4 to 0.6% odds to draw the tag. Now you've seen on the draw report from Idaho, it says, hey, only five non-residents applied for this unit and one of them drew. That's great odds, that's 20%. Do not look at the draw report that way. It doesn't matter. You have to draw the top 10% of all the sheep tags together. You have to be in that top nine position from the non-residents to get your permit. Otherwise you are out and you're void. So where should I apply for? When you look at the application numbers from the last few years, they are increasing quite a bit. We can no longer apply on paper. We have to apply on credit card. It's gotten more expensive and our applicant numbers continue to grow, both residents and non-residents. Okay, we are still subject to only those nine tags. So if you say, I wanna apply for the middle fork, and it's 27-1, 27-2, whatever it may be, those are not going to be better odds as a non-resident. You may as well put in for a hunt that has better trophy quality, higher success rates, because when your application is drawn, you're gonna be in the top nine non-residents. So you might as well have a hunt that you're happy with. If you're a resident, sure, put in for those low applicant hunts because you have a lot better odds, sometimes 20, 25% odds as a resident. If you used to live in Idaho and you have an Idaho lifetime license, you are considered a resident in the draw. Even though you have to pay the higher fees, that is a good way to go. Because when you're a resident, man, you've got a lot better odds than all of us non-residents. So let's talk about cost in the applications. Applications are due on or before April 30th. They give you a month to apply. You don't get a refund if you don't draw until later in the summer. You can apply online on their website. You can also apply over the phone. There's still a processing fee if you do that. You can apply in person, okay, at a licensed vendor or at a regional office for the fish and game. The problem with that is if you're paying with a credit card, sometimes even with a debit card, they're still gonna hit you with some sort of 3% processing fee. It's not gonna end up being much cheaper, if at all, than just applying online. So total cost, this is where it gets tricky. You have to buy a non-refundable hunting license. That's $195 for an adult with the access fee. It's $45.75 just for the application fee. Okay, you can handle that. You may use your license for something else like bear hunting, deer, elk. So you can swallow that. Then you get to the processing fee. We're $90 plus just in the online convenience fee to be able to apply for Idaho. That's where it gets a little steep. You do have to also front the tag fee, okay? Just like New Mexico or Wyoming, you pay the tag fee up front. If you're not successful, it is refunded. So total out the door net cost is over $330. That's including the license. So should you apply? 
here's the question. If you need a Rocky Sheep and you have $330 you're willing to part with, yeah, you should apply. There's nine non-residents. They're gonna be hunting Rocky Bighorn Sheep this year and next year and probably the year after. So if I stood up in the room and said, hey, I got a raffle, it's one in 220 odds, you got one shot and it's $330 ticket. If you would stand up and say, here's my cash, put me in for that one in 220 raffle, then you're the kind of guy that should apply here. If you say, whoa, that's kind of steep, 330 bucks, man, I can apply in other raffles or play other draws in other states, I need that money, then I would not apply in Idaho for sheep. It's very expensive and there are no bonus points, no preference, no system at all. You can sit out a year, start the next year, whatever you wanna do. But keep this in mind as you consider your true odds in Idaho and which hunt you should put on your application. Non-residents should not put those lower tier hunts on them unless they really want to go to that unit if they got lucky. But just think, if I'm the top guy, what hunt do I want? They're going to draw all the residents, fill their quota of 94 tags, which is the total for this year, 2021. And someone's going hunting. If it can be you, great, if you apply. If not, your money might be used better elsewhere, okay? So thanks for watching today, another Mastering the Draw series. We hope this helped you, give you a visualization of how the Idaho Sheep Draw actually works. They will run this draw. Refunds will be available late June, early July, sometimes even later. So pretty slow, but check it out. Leave us a comment on this video if you have any questions. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.